This is on our agenda tonight, simply to have a discussion with the commissioners, and because we're not allowed to talk to one another about it, we have to hold a public hearing in terms of having a conversation. This is a preliminary conversation. We are not having a vote tonight, um, contrary to everything that's been on social media. There is not a vote tonight in terms of approving, not approving this. It's simply a, a preliminary conversation as it relates to proposed ranks. Um, with that being said, um, I know that we, Executive Director Link had a meeting earlier today with Megan from Uber. Um, that I think was a very productive meeting and kind of helped clarify what's going on and what we're looking for. Um, and as we, as we shared earlier, one of the challenges of the commission is that it's not so much, people have said this is all about Uber, it's not so much just looking at Uber, but it's also looking at the number of illegal taxis that we have in the city and trying to address that issue. So this was kind of a, an initial wide, really wide net that was thrown out, um, again, just to really start the conversation. But there's not going to be a decision tonight as it relates to these proposed regs. We recognize that they are not perfect, um, and we welcome the input. So I know we received lots and lots and lots of emails of people who love Uber. Um, these are not an I hate Uber or any other smartphone app type of reg. If anything, it's really, again, starting the dialogue and the conversation and getting the input um, and having some questions that we need to answer that I believe Executive Director Lint was able to get some of the answers of earlier today. Um, so I would invite Megan from Uber to come up um, and at least we can get maybe like 10 minutes of that on sure. the record so people can at least understand that. Because again, I think it's important for me that people understand, um, again, this is just a preliminary conversation. This isn't a, we are trying to adopt these regs as is, at least I can only speak for myself. Um, I don't know about my fellow commissioners. Again, we're not allowed to discuss it with one another unless we have it in a public body like this. So, Megan. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. My name is Megan Verena Joyce, M-E-G-H-A-N, Verena, Joyce, J-O-Y-C-E. And I'm the general manager of Boston. Try to speak loud in Canada up here as well. Um, if it's okay with you, I'll start with a quick overview of um, Uber and, and uh, the proposed regs, and then I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. I'll leave a little bit of time for that. So, good evening, Chair Spears Jackson, Commissioner Haas, Fire Chief Reardon, Executive Director Lind, um, and all of you. My name is Megan Marina Joyce. I'm the General Manager of Uber Boston, and I really appreciate the opportunity to appear before you this evening. Um, and speak about this matter. First and foremost, I want to recognize the very productive meeting that we had this afternoon with Director Lint to express our concerns. And I want to appreciate the Commission's overall willingness to hear the concerns of any of its citizens about the availability of innovative transportation options in the city of Cambridge. We also want to acknowledge uh, Mayor Maher and Councillor Carlone and many others who have spoken out um, on this issue. We're pleased to hear that this evening's hearing is the beginning of this process and considering these regs and not the end and are completely committed to engaging with the commission to find a solution that promotes safe, affordable, and plentiful, plentiful options for transportation in the city of Cambridge. As I think you may be aware, Uber is a technology company founded in San Francisco in June 2010 and is now available in over 130 markets worldwide. Uber software connects people who want rides, who want rides, with the most reliable transportation providers in the local area. Uber does not own any cars or employ any drivers, but rather Uber's lead generation platform enhances financial and professional freedom for local small businesses and access to reliable, safe, affordable rides for local residents and visitors. Uber utilizes industry best standards to ensure the safety of its passengers and, and partners and the quality of the service provided. We require comprehensive and independent background checks for anyone who ever wants to access our uh, driver software. We have very high insurance standards um, 
any ride requested through the act is insured with at least a million dollars in liability insurance, which is 25 times what's required of a taxi in the state of Massachusetts. We have feedback and quality monitoring that literally takes place 24 hours a day, high standards for vehicle, and an unprecedented degree of accountability that comes through our uh, innovative technology. If drivers do not meet the high expectations that Uber users have come to expect, then they are subject to removal from the system. And the same is true for riders as well. In addition, Uber provides economic opportunity for small businesses. Uber's technology platform is generating tens of thousands of jobs across the country and having an overwhelmingly positive impact on local economies, including Cambridge. I expect you'll hear from a few of our driver partners here this evening. As you may have noticed, Uber users are frequently passionate about having access to innovative transportation options. And that's because transportation options are good for riders, they're good for drivers, and they're good for the city. Riders get access to the highest quality transportation providers in the local area with a fast response time. They get reliable and convenient ways to get around, great customer service and transparent pricing, and the safest option available, far less anonymous than a street hail for both the passenger and the driver. Drivers get lower operating expenses and increased revenue through Uber's lead generation technology platform and improve, improve quality of life and safety, including cashless and GPS track system that creates a safer environment for everyone involved. And flexible schedules, creating more time for them for family, loved ones, and even the opportunity to earn extra income as a second job or an additional income opportunity. Cities get reliable coverage for all neighborhoods, particularly historically underserved areas. A reduction in impaired driving through reliable transportation options that are available 24 hours a day. A new market generating tens of thousands of well-paying opportunities. Elimination of single occupancy vehicles significantly reducing car congestion and parking issues. Again, we're incredibly appreciative that this is the beginning of this dialogue with the Licensing Commission and that we have this opportunity to discuss innovative transportation options in Cambridge. I do want to take a brief moment to put on the record our concerns with the current draft regulations that are being presented for discussion. First, the draft regulations create new and at times prohibitive regulatory requirements without any commensurate benefit for public safety or the quality of transportation options in Cambridge. Two, the draft regulations unnecessarily restrict or eliminate the use of technology that can add an unprecedented degree of accountability to the delivery of transportation services, and more importantly, a technology that Cambridge consumers have embraced and want and use on a daily basis. Third, draft regulations seek to impose a minimum allowable charge regardless of time or distance that will eliminate the ability for, fit for Uber to compete, Uber and Uber's partners to compete in Cambridge's transportation market. The, many of these regulations were based on um, regs that were written back in the 1920s and 1930s. And furthermore, these draft regulations would um, re regulate licensed technology software as traditional dispatch garages, which is not only um, an inappropriate distinction, but also unnecessary for this reason. We greatly appreciate the opportunity to begin these discussions with the License Commission and are committing to providing more feedback and information as we move along in this process. There are examples throughout the country of jurisdictions that have worked very positively with Uber and other such technologies to find systems that promote affordable, reliable, safe transportation options and also economic development and opportunity. And very excited about the opportunity to work with you to develop a similar system here. And with that, I'd love to answer any questions that you might have. And again, I know that you spoke to Executive Director Wynn. Um, can you just very, very briefly, <laughs> um, one of the concerns for me, that I can, again, I can only speak for myself, was public safety in terms of the background checks that are conducted on the drivers. So if you can briefly tell me about the background checks that are conducted. Absolutely. So, um, before any transportation provider even has access to our software, they need to come back with a clean bill of health on industry-leading background checks. Um, 
We have zero tolerance policy for any drug, alcohol, sexual offense. And as I said, before even accessing the software, anyone who wants to access the, the driver app needs to come back with a clean bill of health. Our standards are so strict that 10% of Boston taxi drivers who pass the city of Boston's annual checks actually fail our checks because ours are that much stricter. This is something we take extraordinarily seriously and we wouldn't have it any other way. How do you find the The background check? So when a partner applies, and there are a number of people in this room who can tell you about the process, um, they need to provide their information and um, social security number and also their consent to have a background check run. It's multi-state, county, and federal check, and it is um, done on anyone who wants to even access the, the software. So this is similar to a triple I, then. Okay, so it's not just <coughs> yeah, the yes. run triple I checks. What is the triple I? Well, triple I is an interstate check, but it's through yeah. the CGIS system. I'm trying to figure out how you access that. It's my understanding that that is what it is, but I can follow up with you with the exact details of exactly what that background check is. Are the cars inspected regularly? Yes, so it, obviously, in order to put a car on the system, you need to provide your registration and detail to Uber, and Uber keeps all of that documentation on file. Not only do we do um, monthly doc audits to ensure that any um, of the registration information that's coming up for expiration during that month is refreshed, and if it's not, then we freeze the account and we no longer allow that partner uh, with the expired registration to and inspection information to be on the system. Um, moreover, when those um, cars come on the system, they are examined, um, ensure that the quality of the vehicle remains high. Um, and so there are multiple examples of um, a rider writing in, um, or even a driver writing in, and saying, you know, I'm by taking my car to the shop, or um, this, this uh, I noticed that there was a, um, an issue here or there, and immediately we're able to freeze that partner's account and not let it back on the system until we've inspected the vehicle and can ensure that it's in great working order. Um, and finally, we do have vehicle year requirements um, to ensure that it truly is only the highest quality vehicles that are coming on the system. So we also track inspection sticker expiration dates as well. So registration, insurance. Yep. Registration, insurance, driver's license, of course. We have all of those documents on file. And that's obviously the insurance liability is also part of that. Yep, of course. And you know what the term of the liability Absolutely. is. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. All of that needs to meet Uber's strict standards before that driver even I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a myriad of questions around all of these things on every side, but my, my I don't want to speak for my fellow mm -hmm. commissioners, sure. but the issue is to make sure that if someone's using one, that the liability insurance is there sure. similar to or better than what was expected out of the industry. Absolutely. That the drivers, you know, are, are safe and the record's been checked in local states so we don't have any issues with that. And then, then there's the other issues with the cap stands and what their rules and regulations are. Maybe you can speak to that in terms of what the Uber explains to the uh, Uber drivers in terms of their responsibility in terms of cap stands and hailing. Yeah, so we were speaking about this earlier and um, Director Lynch brought to my attention the issue that Cambridge has um, on occasion come across um, cars that appear to be Uber partners or may have self-identified as Uber partners who are sitting in cab stands or places where they shouldn't have. If that's the case, please let me know. And I shared my contact information with Director Lynch um, because that's obviously something that we want to know about. Um, we expect that our partners will abide by the full letter of the law. And um, if that's not the case, we, we want to make that um, make that known and ensure that they are abiding to the full letter of the law. Um, we also have the ability to um, send emails, text messages, voicemails out to our partners to let them know as a reminder um, that that kind of behavior or um, certain regulations, uh, violence or regulations will not be stood for. Um, there are multiple examples of this. One great one is on the relationship with Massport, um, where um, we have a wonderful working relationship with Massport, where they let us know where the areas are here for sales old pickup and where it's not. And not only are we able to set those <laughs> guidelines in our app and not even send a request to a driver partner who is not in the appropriate area, 
area of the airport. But we can also send an email out to everyone and say, FYI, Massport has a new policy, or FYI is a reminder, um, Massport officials will be enforcing. There will be no tolerance for um, whatever behavior is being observed. And so those, those issues, in all candor, have been few and far between. But when they do occur, we do want to know about them and ensure that um, the partners who are using our software are um, in full compliance with the laws and regulations of the local area. So I think one of the concerns uh, that the tax, tax industry is going to have is the notion that somebody will just, uh, ask for a taxi for Uber. And I guess there, you know, we have a big discussion about taxes coming in from outside the jurisdiction to Cambridge. So is there a way to safeguard that if somebody's in Cambridge, unless they're specifically requesting a specific vendor, that Uber could uh, dis disengage? That, that's a great question. Yeah. Let me, a few of my driver operations team members are there. Yeah. Let us brainstorm on that. But those are the very sorts of issues that we would love to be able to engage with you on. Um, <coughs> I, as I noted, you know, Massport is a great example where we're able to hear the concerns of the city and the concerns of the local riders and driver base say our technology is incredibly flexible and allows for an unprecedented degree of um, accountability and we'd like to be able to um, to satisfy that with technological means and not even have to address the issue. But, I mean I think that'd be a big selling issue or a selling feature for at least of our local taxis that are losing sort of limiting that of certain taking advantage of Uber. Um, because the taxi industry is only, probably something that's underrepresented um, in your database. I mean, you know, obviously you know it'd be nice if you know, if your customers in Cambridge and you're asking for a taxi, you know, preferably if Cambridge taxi gets dispatched by the station. Yeah, and as I said, we, we hope that this is only the beginning of the dialogue. And so these are the very sorts of issues that we're eager to hear. And as soon as we know and help identify it, because the conversation with Director of Lynn's it started to surface some of those issues, as soon as we know what the objectives are of this commission um, and the, the goals that you're trying to satisfy in this regulation, then we can start to figure out the best possible way to get after them. And quite frankly, the, the, the best, most um, accountability driving ways to get after them might be something that we can do through the app that doesn't actually um, need a, a regulation written around it or that we can get after it more effectively by addressing it in the app than, than anything. Do you, do you know if they have a lot of cab drivers who are on Uber? There are hundreds of both Boston taxi medallion license cabs and also former taxi drivers who use our software. Um, and I'll let, I know there are some in this room tonight, um, and I'll let them speak to their experience, but the feedback has been quite positive. I think the economic opportunity, the respect that uh, is um, afforded of both drivers and, and riders when they know that um, this is a a system that um, they both feel lucky to be able to use. Um, the feedback that we've gotten is that we, this kind of software affords both professional and economic freedom for um, a lot of people in the Cambridge and Boston area, including taxi drivers. In terms of um, complaints, I know you, you do track complaints and things like that. How liberal are you about sharing those complaints with the license? so that we are aware of these complaints that you, you may be. So, you know, we, after every ride, we ask for a rating one to five stars from both the rider and the driver. We also ask for specific kind of check the box, did you experience these issues, and also an open-ended area for any commentary that they'd like to provide. In addition, we also have um, an email address that has people check in 24 hours a day um, monitoring for issues and complaints. If there are issues that are of the level that they violate local laws, absolutely, those would be shared. If there are issues such as um, this car smelled like cigarette smoke, then you know I think that those are the kinds of things that I think probably would be the best use of your time if we send all of that to you anyway. Um, and frankly, that that we hop on immediately. Um, it is our mission to connect riders to the safest most reliable, most affordable, highest quality transportation providers in the local area. And it's in our best interest to take that feedback extraordinarily seriously. And we have zero flexibility around that. 
um, both rider and driver feedback and handle with the utmost care and seriousness, and um, our, our reputation rests on it. How readily a um, parent is that if we stop uh, losing our taxi, that it's a full partner, or is it you must still know as you actually acquire it? So if you are curious, um, you can always ask. And a Uber partner will not only have a, a smartphone with the app loaded on it, but also a waybill. And the waybill details the full information about um, the request, where that um, ride is requested, um, so that you can ensure that that person really is there to pick someone up at the place that they say they are. Um, and, and so that you can ensure that um, this is an issue of legitimate business. Um, for lack of a better term, rogue street hails or gypsy street hails are illegal for a reason. They are dangerous for both riders and drivers. Um, and we are deeply opposed to them. And in fact, feel that this software provides an incredible alternative to people who in the past might have resorted to an illegal street hail in a time when, uh, at a time of day or week when it was very difficult to get another form of transportation home. And so um, we, um, we want to ensure that our partners who use our software are armed with the full detail to show that they are there to pick up in the place and time that they said they were. We're one of the few communities that actually license our uh, limousine businesses. Yep. And I was wondering how fastidious Uber would be in terms of honoring that requirement. So in other words, if somebody's brought in their limousine here, comes to you, wants to be a partner, would, would that be part of the, 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 I guess, the selection process to determine whether or not they're licensed or not for the city? So the, this um, issue came up back in the fall. I mean, I was in this room with a few of you here, um, where letters were sent to our partners and saying you need a Cambridge license in order to operate in the city. And um, our partners showed up at City Hall and said, um, great, I, I had no idea, I'm a Cambridge resident, I didn't realize, I'm, you know, I'm here to get a license. And we're told that there had actually been a moratorium for, for many years, 10, 10 or so years, on these licenses. Um, you know, I think where, where we become concerned, and I think where um, our users and riders become concerned, is where, uh, where controls are put in place to cap or limit the number of transportation providers that exist in the city. Um, the quality controls that, um, that Uber requires of its partners are um, best in class. And I'm not convinced that, or I haven't seen any data to suggest that there are safety concerns that are not being addressed by our current system. If there are, let's figure out the best way to address them, for sure. Um, but, you know, Uber partners, um, Cambridge uh, livery companies have been Uber partners for the last few years. And um, they've been operating in a way that um, has been quite satisfying to Cambridge riders, um, as you all know. And so, um, again, I, I, um, if there are specific safety concerns, let's talk about those and let's talk about the best way to address them that also uh, foster economic development. Well, it seems to me, and I'm speaking for myself, that in fact we're going to venture down this roadway that uh, obviously the moratorium has to be lifted, mm -hmm. right? Because you want to allow for a free market. And, um, you know, I think that you put you in a bind if we're saying to you, well, we're going to only restrict certain limousines unless we have a valid reason. We can articulate what that reason is. So, I mean, that's something I think we've got to put hand in hand with respect to the notion of um, if we're asking you to make sure that our limousines are properly licensed, that we don't have artificial barriers in the way for people who want to get the apartment with Uber. And, um, you know, as someone who has closely monitored the feedback coming out of Cambridge and the greater Boston area for the better part of the last 18 months, um, I haven't heard any concerns about the safety issues of livery partners picking up in Cambridge, even with the moratorium in place. So I would really question the, the value of putting that kind of system in place um, where it's truly not serving any public safety. Um, this 
just goes a little bit further than I think you're able to go uh, with the local ordinance. So I, I'd be curious to just kind of match up what those two things look like. And yes, Because absolutely. one of the things we're clearly looking for is to make sure that we can assure the public, like virtual fact, that they have a license. Yep. That we've been due diligent about making sure that they pass all our background and screening. So yeah. you can throw that out, I need to look at that. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's look at the data, both what the background checks entail and um, what additional opportunities exist from these alternatives. I'll remind you that 10% of Boston taxi drivers who go through the very kind of system you're describing yeah. actually fail our checks. Yeah. So again, um, I just question the additional value that comes in creating a system that fundamentally puts a cap mm -hmm. on the number of people who are able to access it. That looks good. And if we have a printer in each car? <laughs> um, <laughs> way bill, no, so it's all electronic. So when you, um, if you approach the car or ask a partner, uh, they can tap a button on their app and pull up the way bill. I'm kind of doing the hands for others asking. Yes, for sure, for the record. Um, it's all done electronically. And then the receipts as well are so the, So the driver would be very easy to turn around and give you the, show you the way bill Absolutely. for the particular ride. Megan, are there regs? that you know of that are in place that Uber is subject to somewhere else? Absolutely. So there are um, regulations in places like Colorado and Washington, D.C. Um, that where the local um, authorities and lawmakers have actually partnered with innovative technologies like Uber and its competitors to come up with um, a system that actually looks at this new technology for what it is. That doesn't try to apply a 1920s or 1930s based system onto a completely new business model, but rather says, look, we have software, and we have some mobile transportation providers that are um, getting lead generation from that software. Let's put some standards in place to ensure, to, to rest assured that every transportation provider who uses that software is back on track. And every transportation provider who uses that software does have the appropriate insurance. Um, these are standards that we undertake on our own as it is. Um, but absolutely, if that would um, make the people of Cambridge more comfortable and more safe in using these forms of technology, um, I'd be thrilled to share those um, those rights with you. I'd love to see them. I think that would kind of help us instead of feeling like we're reinventing the wheel. Absolutely, absolutely not too well. Um, <laughs> Just to be able to kind of look at what other municipalities or other states have done, I think would be really helpful. Absolutely, and I, I'd be happy to send those over as soon as we get out of out of this hearing. Send them just like that would be great. Absolutely. And to, and to the commissioner's point earlier, if, if a car was stopped by the police here and they had delivery number, it would be very easy for you to let us know whether or not they're a Uber participant. If you reach out to me, and you can obviously ask the driver and. Have they say yes, and they don't seem to have any documentation. Oh, and yes. there's a question about whether or not they're valid Please or not. Reach out to me. We want to make sure so that would that be something that would be easily attainable by you. We want to make sure that anyone who says that they are a partner of Uber actually is. And so if someone is telling you that they're not, we want to be the first to know. So please let us know. In terms of our delivery office, it's not difficult to be to create a database of your partners that are Cambridge-based, uh, so that they want to do a query uh, just to see if, in fact, a certain taxi cab or these vehicles uses Uber as a Uber partner. Is that something doable? Or? So the, the one thing that I would um, want to make you aware of is we take the um, security of the data of the people who use our app very seriously on both the rider and the driver side. And so um, that would be the one um, question in my mind about kind of creating a database to just hand over to you. No, I suspect you'd probably need some kind of administrative subpoena if you wanted to get yeah. in depth. I'm just thinking exactly. with a general query like Italian XYZ, is that a, is that a partner? We just make, so we make a query based on that. So if a yes or no on the answer. It, yeah. Certainly if we have a subpoena or if we had a rider who you know wanted to confirm somebody was using the system, for sure. Um, <laughs> There are numerous examples of um, how Uber here in Boston has worked very productively with local law enforcement to um, track down information for public safety. Just a couple months ago, I got an email from the Massachusetts Department of Public Health that a um, uh, one of the measles patients who um, in the local Boston area had taken an Uber ride to and from the hospital. And this physician from the Massachusetts Department of Public Health said, 
we believe that um, this patient may have exposed the driver and also anyone who had been in the car shortly thereafter. Um, through the system, we were able, able to confidentially look up the small handful of people who were affected, and I personally called each and every one of them. And they agreed, yes, of course, please provide my information to the Department of Public Health. And not only said that, but also, my gosh, this is incredible. If this had been an anonymous street in a taxi, I never would have known that I had been exposed. And thank you so much. We were able to send public health nurses to homes, ensure that they were okay, follow up with them. And later, the physician um, praised the system and the technology for being able to help isolate um, a potential breakout of the measles just because of the additional transparency and information that the technology affords. So, no, I just ate. Excuse me, can we hear from somebody other than Uber? Yes. Like a Lyft driver, for example? Exactly. Yes. Only for the that was about to, I was about to say, excuse me, excuse me. I was going to say that this is not just about Uber. It's just that that's, that's where we receive the bulk of our emails from. So this just is not about Uber. It obviously affects Lyft, Sidecar. I can't think of the other ones that are out there. So it affects And all taxi that. drivers. Correct. Yes, absolutely. It affects everybody. And, they, and for me, the rogue it's, taxis. The rogue taxis. It's, 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 for us, it's really about having a healthy dialogue. And I think, again, before even looking at putting any regs in place, it's getting as much information as possible to try to be as thoughtful as possible. So I know that, yes, we are spending a lot of time talking to Uber. But I think at the end of the day, we all probably have the same objective, is that we want something that works for everyone. Not everyone will obviously be happy, but again, we're this is for us tonight. We're not looking at implementing what's been out on the internet. It's about getting as much information as possible. And the big piece for me is is the road taxis. It's a big problem in Cambridge. I'm not sure. I'm assuming probably in Boston as well. But we have several vehicles that we know operate in Cambridge that have markings on the side of the car that will say Cambridge. There's numbers on the side, but they're not licensed taxis. Um, there's no taxi light on the top. Um, usually it's some generic sign, if, if a sign at all. Those are really the ones that I'm concerned about, who are out there parading themselves as licensed taxis, and they're not. Yeah, I have an information on the California regulations. I have a question. Just a second. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, so those are the ones I'm really, really concerned about. Um, and also there are several cars that are operating out there that have meters in them and they're not taxes. So how do we draft thoughtful regulations that encompass all of that? I understand fully that in this day and age, not everybody walks around with cash. I am one of them and would prefer to pay by a credit card and not fight about it at the end of my ride and yeah. want a ride that's clean without someone talking on their phone or without trash in the back or you name it. I'm sure there's a long list that everybody could probably help me with. So I get that. Um, and I'm sure my colleagues get that as well. So we're not looking at stifling competition, but again, just making sure that everything is included. So with that being said, if you can send over whatever drafts there are. And if you